Okay, we're recording. Let me have a little sip of coffee. Before I get started, and let me put my phone on. Sorry, I haven't really talked today. <clears throat> so it sounds weird hearing my voice. Anyway, do not disturb, please. Uh, and I suppose I should get Ravelry up. Henry is here. Oh, best boy. Okay. Ready to start. Hi everybody, welcome back to Lally Bee Knits. Um, my name is Natalie, I'm a knitter based in Belfast in Northern Ireland and I share what I've been knitting on a little more sporadically than I want here on my YouTube channel. Um, happy 2024! I haven't seen you this year! Let me get comfy. Um, yeah, I haven't seen you since the start of December. Neil's just trundling around. I'll either be for him to edit out or leave. I leave the editing to him. Anyway, um, hi, haven't seen you this year. Hope you had a nice and restful break. A good Christmas if you celebrate it. Um, Christmas goes by so quickly and we had a lot going on. A lot has happened. So the last time I uploaded the podcast, we were on our way to the cottages in a couple of days to celebrate my granny's 80th. So we did that. And it was lovely and restful um, and busy. I think there were 12 or 14 of us all together out there, um, which is a lot of people, but luckily no one fell out, which is rare in our family because there's so many of us, we just bicker quite a bit. But no, everybody was on great form. It really felt like the wee, vent, the wee place that we go to had the whole place decked out in Christmas trees and lights and it was just, it was so nice. It was so good to just take that break in the middle of how hectic the lead up to Christmas can be for us. So that was nice, much needed. Good to spend a wee bit of quality time with the family. Um, and then um, the, that day, Chloe got into a minor car accident she's okay, the car's okay, everybody's okay and then the day after that I got into a car accident so but the world was not on our side <laughs> just before Christmas. Um, everybody's okay, my wee car got written off, somebody plowed into the side of me um, trying to cut through the Christmas traffic so they were so that was not ideal and not great timing, but everybody's fine. I've got the lend of my mum's little car till I get myself another little run around. Um, yeah, what a thing to happen. Two accidents in the family just before Christmas when we haven't had an accident before. That was the first accident I've been in. So yeah, that was a lot. Um, bad timing because I live about half an hour away from the family so I would always drive down and run around doing lifts and stuff and obviously I couldn't do that. Um, Henry was in the car with me and he was shaken up quite a bit actually. He was good as gold then I think because he could see me while I was sorting it out with the other driver and then um, when we were driving mum picked us up and drove us down to her house for Christmas. Um, he just shook the whole way home and cried. I was like holding him on my knee to kind of keep him secure and he just cried the whole way. He was just petrified of being in the car. So he's okay now, you know, after that first drive, after that first trip back in the car for him. But you don't realise just how much they pick up on and how much it shakes them up but obviously he knew that I was a bit distressed and he had heard the thud and whatever so that was very dramatic pre-Christmas um we had a nice restful Christmas afterwards and 
thank God nothing else has really <laughs> happened since then. I've been off work, which has been really nice because I've been doing a lot of knitting. I did so much gift knitting this year. Usually, usually I do knit. Well, usually I only knit for my mum and my gran and my granddad. But um, the, I just seem to do a lot of gift knitting this year. So I don't have a lot of the projects that I completed, but I completed a lot of projects. So I'll maybe it'll be annoying for him to edit, but maybe I'll drop in um, the gift notes that I've done. I think I showed you Granda's Kyle the last time, but if not, hopefully Neil's dropped a little picture here to let you see. Granda's Kyle was an Arctic Doodle Kyle. It was a test knit that I did for uh, Pacific Knit Co. Um, I did his in three colours. He loves blues. He loves blues, but he also loves reds because his team is Liverpool. So I knit him that one in blues because his last one last year was red. So that'll keep him going. I know next year I'll have to knit him a red one. So that was the first gift knit. Um, I gifted my sister for her birthday in November a pair of Elva slippers. I think I showed you in progress. I'm not sure if I showed you the finished object. Um, they were from the 52 Weeks of Socks book. Um, I knit them in a Lonely Mountain Yarns DK sock set uh, called Gimli. Um, the pattern was tricky. I wouldn't recommend it. It wasn't very well written. Not that it was, it wasn't very well written and it wasn't intuitively written. So I've done a lot of sock knitting and I've done a lot of colour work knitting. This was, there were much simpler ways to do it. And once I had knit them to pattern, I realised there were much easier ways to do it and I could have done it in a lot quicker time frame. But anyway, they're done. I don't think I'll knit that pattern again. They look beautiful. Uh, they look beautiful. So they're with Jess. They were for her birthday. And then I knit a coil for my boss um, out of Life in the Long Grass, which is an Irish company. Um, I can't remember the colours. but The yarn came from a jumper that I knit years ago and I just didn't like it. So I pulled it out because the yarn's beautiful and really I didn't want to waste the yarn. It was so super, super soft. It's 100% merino. Um, so I gave that to him. He was so surprised and delighted, which is nice. Um, so that was a simple duotone coil. I've knit those before. I think I've shown you them. That's kind of my go-to gift pattern for someone who you want to knit a gift for pretty quickly, but it's something that will be kind of nice that they'll wear. Henry's just stretching himself. So anyway, I then knit Simon's Kyle. I can't remember what I showed you last time, so I'm going through all the gift knits that I've done. I knit a Kyle for my friend Simon. He, uh, I joke that he demands Kyle's off me, but actually he was absolutely delighted when I showed him the Kyle. This one, I'm pretty sure I talked about this. This one was by Pacific Knit Go. It's the Cascades Kyle. I did the Infinity version and I knit it out of uh, Drops Charisma. It took six skeins. A wee 50, 50 gram skeins. Right puppy, help you get comfy cos. You want to sit beside me? There. He's wondering who I'm talking to. There, you put your head down, good boy. Um, yeah, so I knit that in Drops. That was a relatively cheap uh, economical gift to make but it took a lot of knitting and it was huge um in the end it was i don't know if that yarn it's supposed to be dk i don't know if it's closer to a worsted weight because the collar ended up big and stiff it was beautiful so um more gifts i knit my knit my friend romano a little pair of socks out of i think that was Paint box yarns, sock yarn, it's a self-striping yarn. Um, 
I knit another pair of socks for Neil's dad. These ones were out of West Yorkshire Spinner. Um, I have no idea what that colourway is. It, I think it might be one of the birds. Would it be a blue tit? They have a little bird series of self striping yarn. So I knit those and I knit ones for his mum as well. Hopefully the pictures are all flashing as I run through these really quickly. These were, I believe, a paint box yarn. It's either paint box yarn or West Yorkshire spinners. Um so I think that was all. It was most of the gift socks that I don't have here. Actually, there's one more pair. I knit a pair for my friend Carol. She hasn't got them yet. So um, we're doing a little gift exchange probably next week. So these are just straight knitting. This was the first club colorway from Beehive Yarns. Um, a little micro stripe. This is the January color. Uh, more on that later on. Um, yes, that was all my gift socks. <laughs> Quite a lot. So then I also gifted my mum a doodle Carl. She chose her colours. Um, if you've been watching the podcast for a while, you know that I love the doodle patterns. And I tested quite a few of them. Maybe two, three, two maybe. Um, loved testing. Love knitting them, but I think I've burnt myself out a wee bit with them. But I knit this one for mum. I held finger and width double and I used mostly Kupnitz socks, yeah. I could have used their DK but it was all knit from stash so that was nice that it was using quite a bit of my stash. I think I used around 200 grams altogether which is pretty typical for my doodle curls. Um, and then I also knit Gran a doodle curl but using the basics doodle pack and it's much lower contrast. She wanted a neutral, um, so I knit this out of Camaro's Snefnug. Hang on, I have the colours here. They were least beige and mm, it says light powder, whatever the... Is it, is it Norwegian or Danish? Whatever the other name is for that. Ravelry says light powder. Um, it's a really low contrast thing, as you can tell. I knit that in two days because it's a nice bulky yarn um beautifully soft I think it fit the bill where she wanted something natural and neutral so that was Gran's present so I think that's all my presents that I knit now I test knit a test for Casey who owns Hank's yarn parlor let me show you I have it here This is the first hot water bottle I've ever knit. Look, my nails match. It was not deliberate, but beautiful. Um, so Casey has had this pattern for a little while for one of her classes, and I was like, Casey, you need to sell your pattern. It's beautiful. So I offered to test knit it for her. Um, I used some iron weight wool that I just had lying in stash. Um, and actually, it gives it this nice kind of French. I think I don't know but love the little pattern very easy to follow very clearly written pattern written for DK and iron weight I believe um, and it should be coming out soon hopefully in case he gets that out um, please go and support if you um, if you want to knit yourself a little hot water bottle cover very cute um, and knit up in no time. That would also be a nice little gift to do. Maybe I'll knit, usually throughout the year I knit like sock tubes to just have, which is why a lot of those socks were knit up so quickly at the end. They were mostly sock tubes that I had knit or Gran had knit and I added heels, toes and cuffs to them. But maybe hot water bottle covers would be a nice change. Something different. Um, Anyway, another finished object. I have more. So the rest of my finished objects are 
socks, which you'll not be surprised at. So the first are my December socks for Sock Bash. Let me put them on my blockers. None of these have actually been blocked, but I have my blockers to show that they'll look nicer. This pair of socks is called the Peace and Joy Socks by... Who is this by? Knitting Kristen. And I actually won the pattern for it. Well, I won a pattern um, doing the pigskin party. It was a participation prize. So I think I knit um, one of their themes for the month and posted about it and, you know, joined in the chat and won a little part participation prize. And I picked this, which was actually her advent pattern for this year. It was officially it was in partnership with Woolens and Nosh, I believe, who do self striping yarns. But I can't get them over here in the UK without paying for crazy delivery. And I had this skein in my stash. This is called Reindeer Games by. Um, I was gonna say Bluebird, not Bluebird. Bird Street Yarns, um, Reindeer Games, and I had this little mini from my advent last year from Pixie Yarn, which just blended perfectly with these. So I knit up a little a long pair of socks for me for December in a little Christmas colorway. But it's not obviously Christmassy. I mean, it kind of, it kind of is, but I'm gonna wear these all year round. It's not obviously Christmassy. They are sparkly though. So they were my December socks. So grateful to receive that little pattern. She has quite a few sock patterns. So I'll link her shop, her Ravelry page below. So that was my December socks. I finished those right at the end because I wanted to get them done for the Grocery Girl Sock Bash and everything else had taken priority over those. So once I got those done, then I could have free reign for everything else. And I thought the biggest thing I want to do is clear some of my needles for 2024. And like I said, I had quite a few um, random little sock tubes that I had knit up. If I had a sock machine, wouldn't that be great? But I just, I either knit them in like the cinema or something or Gran knits them up. So I had a couple of little sock tubes left after all my gift knitting and so I put heels, toes and cuffs on them for myself. <laughs> why, did my, why did my voice break so much? Oh wow. So anyway, this is the first little pair. This is another Bridge Street Yarns pattern. I think this is something about the Gingerbread Man. I don't think they did this. I don't think they released this one this year. It's different to they did have a gingerbread man one out. This is slightly different. I think the brown is darker. But that was a leftover. So I've knit a full pair of socks out of this skein. At least one full pair of socks out of this skein. And I got these little shorties as well. Um, paired that with a, I think this is a Cascades Heritage Red. I knit a jumper out of that years ago and had lots left. So came into, kind of like, they're not, they're slightly longer than shorties, like ankle socks type things. Anyway, some little Christmas socks. I haven't actually worn any of these because I was waiting to podcast about them. <laughs> and then Christmas is over, but I will still be wearing my Christmas socks. So then, continuing the theme of both Christmas socks and Bird Street. This is another pair that I had knit a full... I remember the ones that I knit of this colourway. I knit a pair of coffee top socks last year as my Christmas socks and uh, had enough left over to again knit kind of a long, long ankle set. Um, this is Drunken Santa from Bridge Street Yarns and this is a mini from Pixie Yarn that she, I think she was for a while doing Die to order minis, so that was I just I picked it up as like a little set with other colors and ended up not knitting them together. Um, but I think that green goes perfectly with this drunken Santa. 
Um, so I've used up that whole skin and got two pairs of socks out of it, which is lovely. So that's my drunken Santa pair. The socks are still going. So <laughs> the next pair that I had sitting on the needles that I generally, when I'm knitting a pair of socks, I like to finish the start and finish them within the month so that they count for sock bash for the grocery girls. And I like to get at least one pair of socks done per month, which I think I did last year. I think I did manage it. Um, but there were some thematic socks that I just didn't finish in time. And then I set them aside because I was trying to knit the next month's socks. So this is one of them. This is Pixie Yarn called Monster Mash. It was actually a skein that Chloe had bought last year, maybe the year before. And she knit herself a full pair of socks and then gave me the leftovers. Look how much I got out of this. That's like a full pair of socks. So I paired this with, I think this is a uh, West Yorkshire Spinners black that I just had in stash. I think it looks really nice with the Monster Mash. These are my Halloween socks that never got finished. And instead of doing a rib, basically, I just knit this tube, which I don't usually like doing because I don't really like knitting cuffs with a weird bind off. So what I did with these is actually do a folded hem. And I'll show you. I knit this twice as long and then pulled it around. And what I actually did was I, I think it's called, is it called a three needle? It's not called a three needle bind off. I basically picked up, knit a row round and then bound it off really loosely. So you can see how loose that bind off is. And that's really important because I've knit folded hems before that would not stretch enough. This is enough stretch. Um, whereas before I've knit ones that wouldn't go beyond that. So to do that, I made sure I was really loose. You can kind of see, yeah, how loosely I knit that one. Um, and I actually really like the look of them. I think they'll be really sturdy. Sturdy? I think they'll stay up. So, my little Halloween socks off the needles, ready for a fresh pair in 2024. That's what, one, two, three, Four pairs of socks, one more pair of socks. Last pair that were on my needles, I put them away. I really wasn't looking at them. And then I saw them and I thought, this is like the end of 2023. It was like two days before New Year's Eve. And I thought, get these off your needles. Get them finished so that you can start fresh. I think I finished them on either New Year's Day or the day after. Actually, I didn't put too much pressure on myself to finish them. Um, oh, they're my favourites. This is my first finished object of 2024. The sock set was from Botanical Yarns years ago, maybe two or three years ago now. Uh, I can't remember the colourway of it, but maybe pink cushion flowers? sticking out in my mind um I love these colors together I love this and this isn't the color I would usually gravitate towards but I love it um and I just tr I kind of randomized the stripes and let me tell you that was stressful I didn't I didn't, will never do that again <laughs> I will just knit the stripes in the order that I have established up here um because I'm not a loosey-goosey kind of person it was stressing me out a bit. I was like, oh, I'll be creative. No, I didn't. No, I should not have been creative. I should have just knit. Not not. Anyway, love these socks. Loved how they turned out. I added, this is a Coop Knits grey. It kind of makes me think of school jumpers. I bought it to see if I would knit a jumper in it. And then I thought, no, I had a school jumper that was literally this colour growing up so no <laughs> but nice for socks Um, I've knit with this sock set before I knit you'll recall the spectacular socks do you remember the little color work zigzags that I did and I messed up tying my ends in so I had to re-knit a full sock 
So I've actually got three little socks, like three ankle socks over it and this full pair. Um, like I said, finger and weight yarn, you can get two pairs of socks, especially if you add contrast. Very economical way of knitting socks. Um, so yeah, that was in my little phase of loving mini skin sets, which is set to revive for this year, but I'll talk about that later. So that's all my finished objects. <laughs> I think that is the longest, the most finished objects I've had ever on the podcast. I do have, I made this and I made it for me and Chloe and Sophie for our little Christmas at the cottage. This is a Liberty print fabric. This bag, I think I talked about it before. This bag is um, can do patterns on Etsy. Um, it's a little basic drawstring bag, but she gives full instructions for lining, for pockets. Um, oh, I forgot to sew in. <gasps> After all that, I forgot to sew in my little gap that you turn your bag inside out with. <gasps> I may sew that. But I just added a little bit of ribbon. This is my Christmas bag for the year. Um, I love it. I have too many of these. I have genuinely too many bags. I was sifting through my stash and was like, I have so many of these and I don't want to get rid of them. <laughs> but I have so many. Like I now have seasonal bags. So this will go away for next year. I was like, mm, maybe it's wintry, but these are definitely Christmas trees. So that's a Christmas present car. But it's not winter, it's Christmas. So she'll be going away for next year. I love it. I, wouldn't this be a nice like sock set color beautiful anyway love that for me that's all my finished objects no more but lots more to show <laughs> so let me take a little sip i'm waiting for the postman to arrive because i also have to go to the library which closes in an hour I don't think the postman will arrive in time. Right, so I'll continue with socks. I have one pair of socks on the needles. I have one pair of socks on the needles. It's not true. I have a little scrappy pair for Neil that I never knit unless I like need stockinette knitting and I don't have anything cast on that's stockinette. But they're just scrappy. I'll show you them when they're done. This is my only active pair of socks on the needles. This is my sock bash entry for January 2024. Um, sock bash always starts with the colour of the year, the Pantone colour of the year, and the colour of this year is this colour. It's like it's like a peach fuzz, something like that. Um, and so I was looking through my stash and thought this little sock set is perfect for this. This is a Giddy Ant Yarns sock set. I think it's called Ice Bubbles. It was one of their special Curiosity Club colours, I think. But they had extras of it at a market. And I snatched it up. I think, I believe I snatched this colour <laughs> as soon as I saw it. I was like, this is for me. I must have this. So this is my January yarn. And I'm doing a sock from... Let me get this right. I went through a wee phase of knitting hers. This is Summer Lee, who you probably have seen on Instagram. Her socks are beautiful. And this is the Broken Rope sock from her Hello Sailor sock set. It's very simple pattern. It's a broken um, rib stitch. And I basically just did it the whole way down. So this is going to be a ribbed, kind of a ribbed sock, but not quite as tedious as one by one rib. It makes for a very structured sock, actually. Like, look how I, perfectly, she's sitting. Um, so I did, I think, 10 rows here. I usually do 16 for my cuff, but the whole thing's ribbed, so it didn't really matter. And I liked the kind of balance I had there. So I will do 
full length socks for this. I'll do my cuff, I'll do my heel flap and I'll do my toes in the peach. And there is a little bit of that peach thrown in there but it's beautiful isn't it? It makes me think of like a rock pool. I actually had set this aside as like a summer colour because it made me think of seasides and rock pools. Um, like that just looks like the beach with like seaweed and shells and crabs and things. But because it was the Pantone colour of the year I was like this, I have to knit this. This is perfect. So that's my little sock for January. I do need to get a move on with knitting this. It's in this little bag that I made. Very cute. Same pattern as before. I'm obsessed. Um, that's my January sock. And uh, I have an exciting whip and a not quite a, a kind of long term whip. So I'll do the long term whip first. This is my Hoohee and Co Pampa Bucket Bag. Love this. Love it. I have two. Because she's spoiled. But uh, <laughs> this is housing my Achun Shawl by Andrea Murray. Um, so I've had this on the news for a long time. I have not picked it up and made much progress on it. But this is essentially lots of scraps in this kind of colour family. So it's a brioche on one side and a fisherman's rib on the other. And it's not potato chippy knitting. Chloe took the piss out of me for saying that. Basically, it's not, it's not a pattern that I can just knit without thinking. There are, you knit each row twice and there are four separate rows. So really you're knitting eight rows per repeat and I really need to think about it when I do it so it's not something I can just pick up and do I like to complete a full repeat so it's something I need time to sit and do but when I do it it's so meditative I put a little audiobook on and I just power through it's beautiful and squishy it's going to take a long time to knit Really, if I just dedicated, if this was the only thing I was knitting on, it would probably, I'd probably finish it in a month, but it's not the only thing I'm knitting on. It's not the only big project I'm knitting on either. So it will just take as long as it takes. It's using a lot of stash. I have lots of this kind of colour family in. I think I've gone through this before. Oh, that's a no beehive yarns club colorway that is beautiful and would fit per i built this around this but it would also be nice socks but i have so many socks so anyway that's my long-term whip in my pamper bucket and then my final whip you're not ready for this i cast on a sweater here am i Sorry for shouting there, that's probably very loud and annoying. Um, I cast on the, this is an Mari, Andrea Mari pink velvet sweater. And mine is not pink, it's blue. And it's not velvet either. This is written for Surrey Alpaca, I think, and Merino held together. I did not do that. I used Cascade Heritage Silk. I finished the yoke yesterday Um, I used to, it's it's a budget luxury yarn so I think it's maybe 13 pounds a skein which is expensive for Cascade but cheap for yarn that has silk in it it's like merino silk don't think there's nylon in it I'm not too sure I haven't looked at the labels in a long time I don't think I have any here no but I have four skeins of four four skeins of the blue and three skeins of the white. No, that is total lie. One, two, three, four skeins of blue, one skein of the white, and I finished the white. I might do some white colour work on the sleeves 
just to tie it in but that's the color work done I believe so I think in her pattern the white and mine is the fluffy surrey which would be beautiful but I had this in stash I knew I wanted to do a kind of wintry jumper and pick this I actually cast it on before did not do a gauge swatch it was not a good idea didn't do a gauge swatch and um, it was enormous <laughs> it was enormous so I ripped it all out left it for ages and then picked it up again it went down a size I think this is much more reasonable this will fit I did put it on bigger cord just to check so I think it'll be fine so at the minute I'm just knitting plain to make the yoke longer and then I'll split for sleeves and then it'll be stuck in it city from here on out. The only thing is knitting with this silky yarn is um difficult with my stainless steel needles. I think it would be easier on wooden needles but I just don't have any and I don't think it's worth buying an extra set when I can just persevere and knit with the chalvias that I usually knit with. Um, but it's beautiful. I love the pattern. Love it. It's kind of floral, kind of feathery, abstract. Beautiful. So I'm really excited about this. I This is going to be my main priority. It's in a big version of the wee hand sewn bags that I like to sew. That's all my whips. I do have a, um, I have a crochet granny square scrappy blanket on the go that's just kind of always on the go. I have no real progress to share on that. I did make a couple of granny squares the other day. It's just tinkering away. Once there's actual progress to show on that, I'll share that with you, but it just looks like a load of granny squares. So, should we do acquisitions? Let me get myself sorted with what I have because I have a lot I actually have this bag from Waterstones that just is full of my acquisitions so I'll just trail out as and when there's no rhyme or reason really to it first one is my December colorway did I show my November one from Beehive Yarns let me see is it in here it's not in here I've shown it already oh no it is in here right so I've got November and December here from Beehive Yarns. I've been getting their Simple Pleasures uh, Yarn Club all of 2023. First time I've had a club for the whole year. Loved everything about it. I opted for singles finger and, so finger and weight skein in Sparkle. So this one is November. It's called Hibernate. Look at that, oh, that's, it's just beautiful. Just beautiful. So soft, perfect January color, I think. Again, my nails matching. Um, beautiful. This is definitely a November cast, or a January cast on. But I'm doing my peach. So that was November, this is December. I don't have my little um, inspo card. I usually tuck it in but I think it's downstairs this the inspo picture was a wreath with like lots of foliage and berries and stuff on so this is called make and it's their December one it's so beautiful I have not seen a Christmas yarn with this taupe color before it's just so beautiful absolutely gorgeous will definitely be my Christmas socks for next year I'll tuck that away as a little special theme so that is the end of the Simple Pleasures Club I got every month I should have thought about it and brought all the skeins together but I have been knitting with some of them loved that club loved it um so much so that I have signed up for our next club so our 2024 club is uh, very vintage 
and I've gone for mini skeins instead of the sock set this time, which I'm really excited about. I love a mini skein set. The reason I didn't get mini skeins last year was because I had just got the Pixie Yarn Advent and was coming down with mini skeins. So I thought, there's no point in getting even more mini skeins. So last year I went with the solid, the sock set, the socks, sparkly socks. This year I'm going for mini skeins because I didn't get an advent last year. This will kind of be like an advent, a year long advent. Um, I'm so excited to receive them. I'm so excited to receive them. So, there will be lots and lots of stripy socks in my future, I think. <laughs> or maybe stripy projects, I don't know. I'll probably collect them for a little bit and then decide what to do with them. But uh, she had put up a couple of extras of her um, last year's club colourways on her website. I don't know if there are any left, but if there are, you should go and check them out. They're beautiful, really lovely lovely colours. Um, so that's my my sock club for last year done. I'm still waiting on this year so it'll probably come in the end of the month. For Christmas Neil got me some yarn that I've been wanting. Um, it's difficult to get Brooklyn Tweed in the UK. There's only a couple, maybe two, three, two shops for definite that I know of that stock it. Uh, loop, loop Knitting Shop in London. I think their website is loopknitting.com and Tangled Yarn did and then I got this off a yarn story which I believe is in Bath. This is a Brooklyn Tweed Loft. It's their fingering weight. Um, this is what I knit my Birkin out of that I've worn in every video recently. Um, this is what I knit it out of. The, it has been so hard to get this cast iron colour. It's just been out of stock for at least six months I've been looking for it. Couldn't find it and then find it in a yarn story. Ordered it. Royal Neil lost the package. Very upset because the only, the only cast iron yarn in all of the UK was gone. And then miraculously it appeared. So I'm delighted about that. Um, so I have my enough for a sweater quantity. This is, these are 50 gram skeins. I actually have another two skeins plus lots of leftovers from the two jumpers that I've knit out of this. Those two jumpers are my favorite jumpers. And as someone who knits primarily with superwash and who has quite sensitive skin, a lot of rustic yarns irritate my skin. These don't, like I can be prone to eczema, no eczema at all with this. And it isn't, you know, if, if you are delicate, this is scratchy yarn, but it doesn't irritate my skin at all, which is weird because then my skin's very sensitive. But Love it. It's my two favourite jumpers are knit out of this. So I now have enough to knit another colourwork jumper. I'm planning what to do. That will probably be the next one I cast on after I finish the pink velvet. My blue velvet. Maybe I should call it my blue silky because that's what it's knit out of. Anyway, um, little sweater quantity from Neil for Christmas. Very happy with that. Um, just before Christmas, I nipped into one of my local yarn stores, which is called Folklore. And I was just feeling like I wanted to buy yarn. You know when you just get those days where you're like, I need to buy something. Well, I went in and they always have a good stock of West Yorkshire spinners. And they always do decent little... Um, holiday colour works. I believe they have a Hanukkah one. There's a lot more Christmassy ones. So these are the two Christmas colours I got. This one is the Nutcracker, um, which is skinned up because I had, a pl I had planned to knit it in December 
and then there was just so much gift knitting that I just didn't get into. So I'll maybe knit these throughout the year. I have so much Christmas yarn, I may as well just knit them throughout the year. I may as well do my thing of stocking up soft tubes so that I can gift them at the last minute. And this one is Holly Berry. Holly Berry. Another self striper as well. I love those actually. I think they make really nice traditional looking socks. Minimal effort, maximum Christmas. Um, and while I was there, I also picked up um, some Exmoor sock by John Arbin. Uh, this is, what colour are you? Mizzle. It's very faint, I think that says Mizzle. Um, because most of my sock yarn is colourful and variegated and quite a lot of the patterns that I own benefit from a nice plain colour to really show off the pattern. So I wanted to buy yarn <laughs> and I wanted to buy yarn that I would use so I will use this. Lovely, very rustic in a different way to the Brooklyn Tweed. The Brooklyn Tweed is, I believe it's called worsted spun. So basically you can just pull it apart with your hands and felt it, rub it with a little bit of water back together and it'll rejoin itself. Which makes you think that'll be really delicate to knit with and difficult to knit with. It absolutely is not difficult to knit with. It's beautiful. Um, whereas this is spun. So it's like any other kind of regular yarn you would you would knit with. You can't just pull it together, pull it apart, and then spit slice spit splice it together again. But love John Arbin. Have you ever seen the? Um, they came to um, there was a wool festival in Whitehead, uh, which is a tiny town in Northern Ireland near where I used to live. Um, and they did a wool festival, and it was the first time I had ever been. It's the only wool event that I've been to and I was brand new to knitting. I'd only knit with commercial yarn so I didn't know what I was looking at. It's the first time I saw Goody Ant yarns. It's the first time I saw Woolly Mammoth yarns. They had so many great vendors that I just didn't appreciate because I had no idea what I was looking at. But they also had John Arvin was like the star of the show and they had this huge display where they bring out these like, they're kind of like bookcases full of their knit by numbers range. And they just, it, they had the most impressive display. They had so many colors. They're so knowledgeable about their colors. If you, if there's a knitting event near you and they're at it, go and have a look. It's incredible. Oh, I have one more skinny yarn. <laughs> Bird Street yarns in elf was it called elf i thought it was called something else no it's called elf and it's in sparkle and it's got a micro strike and i didn't get the cast on this year again too much going on um but yeah that'll be put away for next year so that's everything that's plenty to be getting on with so what I've done is, let me find my little notebook. Last year, my little new year resolution was to knit from stash. And I have made a conscious effort to do that. I have built projects around what's in my stash. My stash is out of control. It's not as huge as some people's, but it's, it's a lot. And I want to knit through it and I want to remind myself of what's actually in it. This is the wrong book. So, I was doing this complicated way of trying to track um, my knitting, what I produce versus what I buy in by weighing, by like rounding up skeins of yarn or half skeins, whatever. It was too complicated and annoying and my math was not mathing. So what I decided this year to do was to track in grams how much is in my stash, 
how much I'm knitting and how much I'm buying in. Does that make sense? So that my resolution is to knit more grams of yarn than I buy in. Um, so, <laughs> do you want to know how much I have in stock? Now this does include, it includes all of my projects that are on the needles pre-January. Um, it doesn't include my scrappy crochet blanket because I forgot to wear it. Um, so everything apart from that scrappy crochet blanket, I'll give you a wee second to cast your votes. I have 16 kilos of yarn. Actually, it's 16,086 grams of yarn in my stash. Um, let me just remind you that there's 100 grams in a typical skein, so it's probably about 108, 168 skeins worth of yarn in my stash. It's still ridiculous. It's it's too much for a person. It is a collection of over seven years, but I need to make a conscious effort to knit more. I produce more than I'm buying in. So that's my plan. I'm going to, I've got in my little book journal, I've got my project, whether I finished it and how much it weighed at the end. So what I'll do every month is total up how much yarn I have and I've counted all of these acquisitions they've all been counted in that 16,000 people <laughs> and then what I'll do is I will add it in here and keep a track of how much I use and hopefully by the end of 2024 I will it will not be 16,000 if I, I'm aiming for 12 Twelve's a bit ridiculous because that's really only four skeins. Is it four skeins? I can't do maths, right? Never mind me. I'm aiming for twelve um thousand grams of yarn and stash. Bear in mind that I'm getting a hundred grams every month in the next twelve months because I've signed up for my sock club. So realistically what I need to do is knit more than one pair of socks, because a pair of socks is usually about 70 grams. But this is the, going to be the year of jumpers, jumpers, jumpers. I didn't knit very many jumpers at all last year. Um, so yeah, I'm going to focus on knitting big projects that use up a lot of yarn <laughs> and see how I go. So that's everything from me. Overconsumption at its finest right now. Um, I will not be having as much to share going forward i do want to do be a little bit more consistent thank you so much if you've lasted this long my god 53 minutes lovely anyway i'm gonna wear all of the socks that i've been saving up to show you Um, i'll see you in two weeks i'm gonna put it in my diary i'm going to edit it i'm going to give neil my editor a little talking to to see if he'll edit it on time uh either that or learn how to edit my songs not that there's a huge amount of editing goes on, but I just, he makes it look easy <laughs> and wants to. So anyway, um, yes, all being well, I will be back in two weeks. I will have things knit. I will hopefully not have very many acquisitions in because that defeats the purpose of trying to knit through my stash. And I will see you then. Uh, look after yourselves. Have a good one and I'll see you later. Bye.